one of the main reasons that I took this view that, as I say, the universe is a succession of what I call eons, each of which begins with a Big Bang and ends with the universe expanding indefinitely in this sort of way, exponential expansion that we seem to see. Now, I've been troubled by something for many, many decades, which is the second law of thermodynamics, which tells you that things get more and more random as time goes on. And this tells you that the Big Bang ought to be very non-random. And one of the most striking pieces of evidence for the existence of the Big Bang is what's called the microwave background. This is radiation coming, electromagnetic radiation coming from all directions. And one of the most striking features of this radiation is that it's in a maximum state of entropy. That is, it's completely random. So it's a sort of puzzle. Where does all this non-randomness come if we're just presented with randomness? And I came to the conclusion that it has to be in gravity. That gravity has not been taking part in this. It's somehow set at a very low value. The entropy is very low right at the beginning. And that means, for gravity, it means it's very uniform. So this is a huge puzzle. Why was gravity behaving differently from other things? And I worried about this for a long time, thinking that some kind of quantum gravity would have to be a very time asymmetrical theory, and that didn't work very well. Until I hit on this idea that the very remote expansion, this exponential expansion, expands and expands and expands, it gets colder and colder and colder and less and less dense, and black holes being the most important things around eventually evaporate away by hawking evaporation. It just turns into, eventually turns into radiation. There's nothing left, except it's all spread out. When matter is all spread out like this, and it's only photons, so it's mainly photons, that is particles which don't have any mass, they have no way of telling how big they are. So it's a mathematical thing. But when you don't have any mass, big and small are equivalent. So the remote future, the universe sort of forgets how big it is. That's a crazy idea, of course. But that's the concept. It doesn't really know how big it is. And what about the Big Bang? You see, the Big Bang is the opposite. It's really hot and very dense and everything like that. And you think, what could be more different? But when you look at it carefully, you see the very hot particles running around. Because they're moving around so fast, whatever mass they have, it doesn't even count. The motion is the thing that dominates. And so they, in effect, have no mass either. At both ends, you have no mass. Therefore, neither end knows how big it is. Now, you've got to have some equations to make sense of this. But the idea is the expanded previous eon, as I call it, becomes our Big Bang. Now, you have to make equations to make that make sense. This is the part that people have great trouble swallowing because it looks so different. But when you look at it from the, the conformal point of view, that big and small shapes make a lot of difference. But whether they're big shapes or small shapes doesn't make a difference. And if you, that means, from that perspective, the remote future looks like a big bang. So it explains this puzzle I had of the second law of thermodynamics. And I don't think of any other theory I've seen explains it.